In this video, we'll walk through replacing the seals in the Superflow and Supermax pump provided in the Quick Kit from Pentair. And for this video, we'll be using the Superflow pump. If you're doing this work on a pump that's still installed in the system plumbing, make sure to close the suction and discharge gate valves to avoid flooding the equipment and always follow manufacturer safety and warning instructions. The quick kit for the Superflow comes with the mechanical shaft seal, the diffuser o-ring, the pump lid o-ring, the seal plate gasket, two drain plug o-rings, and a small tube of silicone lubricant. Let's start by removing the pump lid. It may be on pretty tight, so if you need to, you can use a rubber hammer and gently tap the handles to help loosen it up. If you flip the lid over, you can see the lid o-ring. There's a small lip around the edge of the pump lid, so you may need to use a flat blade screwdriver to help get this o-ring out. And then we can go ahead and take out our pump strainer basket. Now we need to remove the volute from the seal plate. And we do that by removing these four 9 16 bolts that secure them together. Here we're using a 9 16 inch wrench to loosen and remove these bolts. As we take these bolts out, notice the two bottom bolts also secure the pump base. Okay, let's remove the volute from the seal plate by pulling them apart. And again, if the volute is hard to separate from the seal plate, you could use a rubber hammer to gently tap the volute to help separate the two. With the volute off, we can see the diffuser. Notice that the tab on the diffuser is at the top. We want to go ahead and take off the diffuser o-ring. The o-ring sits in a groove on the diffuser, so you may need to use a small flat blade screwdriver to help get it out of the groove and remove it. And we'll go ahead and remove the seal plate o-ring as well. We have three screws that secure the diffuser to the seal plate. They can be removed with either a 3 8 drive or a flat blade screwdriver. To remove the impeller, we need to remove the impeller locking screw. We first need to remove the cover from the back of the motor to access the shaft so we can hold the motor shaft while we loosen the impeller lock screw. There's one screw that holds the cover to the back of the motor. We can use a flat blade screwdriver to remove this screw and then remove the cover. Now we can hold the back of the shaft with a half inch wrench while we use a 3 8 drive or flat blade screwdriver to loosen the impeller locking screw. Remember this locking screw is left handed thread so clockwise to loosen. If you have a variable speed pump or a pump with the totally enclosed fan cooled or TEFC motor, there's an Allen key that's accessible through the back of the cover to hold the shaft in place. Now that the locking screw's out, we want to remove the impeller. Continue holding the shaft of the motor while we loosen the impeller. The impeller is standard thread, so you'll turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. Now that the impeller is off, we can see the mechanical seal. We need to remove the outer part of this seal in order to take off the seal plate. This seal can be on the shaft pretty tight, so with the help of pliers, we can hold the shaft at the back of the motor and twist the seal side to side to loosen and remove it. Now we need to remove the seal plate from the motor by loosening these four bolts that hold them together. We use a 9 16 wrench to remove these bolts. With the bolts out, we can slide the seal plate off of the shaft.
The seal plate portion of the mechanical seal is pressed into the seal plate. So to remove this, we're going to use a 5-8 socket and a rubber hammer to drive the seal out of the seal plate. Before installing the new seal into the seal plate, we first want to thoroughly clean the seat in the seal plate for the new seal. We'll spray the seal seat with a mixture of light duty detergent and water to help seat the seal when we install it. When handling the seal, be careful not to touch the sealing surface with your hands since oils and dirt on the skin can shorten the life of the seal or cause it not to seal properly. We'll place the seal into the seat and then using a 3 quarter inch PVC coupling, we can press it into the seat. It should go in pretty easy, but if you need to, you can use a rubber hammer to help seat it properly. If we do get any dirt or oil on the ceramic surface of the seal, we can always clean it with alcohol and a lint-free cloth. We can now reinstall the seal plate onto the motor. The top of the seal plate is labeled by the word top to help us position it properly on the motor. Insert the motor shaft through the seal and install the four bolts we removed earlier. Tighten these bolts evenly in a crisscross manner to avoid distorting the seal plate. The torque specification for these bolts is 75 to 80 inch pounds. The other half of the seal can go onto the motor shaft now. You can see the side that goes toward the impeller has a rubber shaft seal. We want to make sure we keep the other side or the sealing surface clean and don't contaminate it with dirt or oils from our skin that could prevent it from sealing properly. To help with assembly, we can spray the shaft seal with a mixture of light duty soap and water before installing it onto the motor shaft. We can now reinstall the impeller by threading it onto the motor shaft clockwise. Hold the motor shaft again with a half inch wrench and tighten the impeller by hand. Then reinstall the impeller lock screw. Remember, this is a left hand thread screw, so counterclockwise to tighten. The diffuser has three locating pins that line up with holes in the seal plate. And also remember, the tab on the diffuser goes to the top. Align the pins with the holes and secure the diffuser with the three screws we removed earlier. Now we can install the diffuser o-ring. Put a small amount of the supplied silicone lubricant on the o-ring and install it into the groove on the diffuser. And like the diffuser o-ring, apply a small amount of the supplied silicone lubricant to the seal plate o-ring and install it onto the seal plate. Now we can reinstall the volute. Remember that the pump base was held on by the two bottom bolts of the volute. So get the base in place, Apply a small amount of grease or anises to the threads and reinstall the bolts. Tighten these bolts evenly in a side to side manner. The torque specification for these bolts is 95 inch pounds. We have two drain plugs on the pump one on the suction side and one on the pressure side. Let's go ahead and remove these drain plugs and replace the o-rings with the new ones that came in the quick kit. Now install the pump strainer basket making sure that the opening in the basket lines up with the front or suction side of the pump. Make sure that the sealing surface of the pump lid and the volute are clean. Apply an even amount of the supplied silicone lubricant to the pump lid o-ring. Install the new o-ring onto the lid and then reinstall the lid assembly. And that's it. 
The pump is now ready to go back into service.